uh, we, we plan to have basically two short presentations providing two different views uh, for the uh, dimension of the PhD after, so the life after PhD from the industrial or the um, industry uh, participation for the candidates. So uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce you, the, the, the two speakers, uh, in the reverse or order. Um, the latest one will be Professor Álvaro García. You probably uh, know him very well. She's now on leaving a period for running his own company, uh, Baobab Solu Soluciones, so solutions, more or less. <laughs> then uh, he will provide us with the, the vision, his vision, but also the vision of the people hiring uh, PhD or educated people, right? And in the in the, the first part of the presentation will be handled by uh, the opposite vis vis vision or view, which is the PhD candidate enrolled and working uh, and, and working as a educated person for a, for a company. So then it's my great, greatest uh, pleasure to introduce you, Dr. Ilaria Di Santis from the Politecnico, Politecnica de Le Marche, Marque, Marque, more or less, okay. <laughs> and uh, well, the floor is yours, Ilaria. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so I'm Ilaria and uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, Joaquin, Professor Ordieres, and even uh, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid that brings me this opportunity and the trust on me and that think that my experience could be useful to all of you. Um, so if you are wondering why I'm here, it's because three years ago I finished a PhD, an industrial PhD. It's an European PhD and where I did two years in Italy in Universita Politecnica delle Marche and one year, almost one year here in uh, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. So I suppose that if um, you are attending this conference, you are on the last step of your PhD. So first of all, I would like to congratulate to yourself, uh, to all of you, because I've been in your shoes not so many years ago, and I know how hard is this path that you are doing, how sometimes even discouraging it will be, but at the same time, how ex exciting it is. So really, congratulations to all of you. <laughs> OK, uh, after that, um, OK, when Professor Ordieres asked me to do this speech, I said, OK, great. Uh, let's collect all the information that could be useful to this guy. And so when I start to prepare this uh, presentation, that um, is not absolutely technical. There is uh, nothing technical, just something about my job. But after uh, I realized that I was doing like a, an, an introspective work uh, with myself about what really meant uh, having a PhD in my personal and even in my professional, professional life. So I think that one of the big questions when you are on the final step of PhD is what I'm going to do after. So I, I'm not going to answer to this question for you. I will not assume this responsibility. But uh, I'm going to tell you my, my path, what I, what I thought, what I read when I was on the final step, so that I, I hope that it could be uh, uh, useful for you, that even uh, it, can, it can help you in the positive or negative way. Maybe you will think, uh, I don't want to do what this lady do. So uh, I think it could be helpful. So um, one of, of the things that I most like of PhD uh, is the, that you can use your uh, creative. You can be a cre creative person. You can use your imagination, and uh, you can use your subject. You can, you can decide your subject. And uh, you can use every time you want your imagination to propose something that makes sense. So uh, when, before starting the PhD, I was working in a company, in a service company, in the oil and gas sector, in the department of maintenance. So um, it was a really interesting job because we, we were working in the oil and gas sector. We were working on platform, on big offshore platform. So at the beginning, it was really exciting. But after, it was a really routinary job because you have to plan 
the maintenance every month, so you have to avoid that the uh, unscheduled maintenance will, uh, will occur. So it was something that every month you know what is going to happen. Every month you know the end of the story. So uh, I know that uh, during the PhD, what I realized is that I didn't want to do a routinary job. I didn't want to do something that mm, get me bored. I want to do something uh, creative, something where I can uh, create and I can imagine different things. Uh, after that, what I learned during the PhD is that I love teaching. I love speaking with people, with different people. I love speaking even in public because you even learn to speak with, uh, with different people uh, of all over the country. So uh, I even love teaching. I say, OK, so I don't want to do a routinary job. I love teaching. And another thing is that, OK, in PhD, you are not alone because you have your supervisor. You have uh, you maybe co-authored many papers, so you work with other people. But you have self-motivate yourself. So in this part, you are a little bit alone, maybe. And you have to schedule your times. You have to organize by yourself. So this part, maybe it's the hardest part of the, of the life of PhD, because you have to organize your time. You are free. It's totally a flexible activity, so you are your own boss. But uh, I think it's one of the most hardest things. And so in this part, maybe I missed a little bit the, the company where uh, every day you, you speak with a lot of people, with every day you have a lot of conference, of meeting. It's uh, in uh, continuous interaction in company, maybe. And maybe in my PhD, uh, I didn't have this opportunity, but maybe during uh, other kind of PhD, you had this opportunity. Uh, so this was another thing. Um, but um, so I, I had all these conflicting idea in my mind, but I knew that I wasn't alone. I, I was conscious that there are a, a world of PhD students that they were in the same situation of me. So I started to read. I read a lot of things. I read, uh, for example, that many PhD students don't stay in the, in the academia, not because they don't want to stay in the academia, but because the university awards seven times more PhD than the faculty position. So this is even a reality that really shocked me, that I say, oh, wow. When I start the school, when I apply to school, I, I didn't talk to, to that. I didn't read that. Uh, but after, when I, I start to, to read all these things, I, I even realized that when you finish the, um, the PhD, outside the academia, you have a universe of opportunity. You don't have a world of opportunity. You have the entire galaxy of opportunity. So I read many, many stories about uh, outside the academia. For example, I read about a PhD on physics that now it's working on the Metropolitan Museum, and he chemically analyzed art. I even uh, read about uh, a linguistic PhD, for example, that it's uh, social media responsible in, uh, in, a, in a multinational company. So all these cool stories give me the, the feeling that I had a lot of opportunity. And that you don't have to think of PhD just a one-way ticket to the academia. You have to think of PhD like your passport. It's a passport that will give you the opportunity to go whatever you want. So you just have to choose your destination, make all, pack all your Oriole bags according to the destination, and go whatever you want. So uh, all these stories that I, uh, that I read, or even all the, the jobs opportunity that I discover outside the academia, um, makes me understand that uh, there is my path, I thought. Somewhere there is my path. I just have to find my path, where is my path, and um, what is my path. So uh, finally, I found my path. And uh, now I'm working uh, since 2015 in uh, Securitas Direct, that is a security company, as a data analyst in the customer experience department. It's a really funny job. And, uh, but after, I will tell you something more. Uh, after that, I would like to, to make, you, uh, make with you like um, a job of, um, let's say, uh, a sentence. For example, uh, I did a PhD. What does it mean, I did a PhD in the professional world? What means for a company that you have a PhD? So um, when I start working in a company, you will meet many profiles. You will meet a high profile, 
but even really low profile, that they have no idea of what a PhD is. So uh, what is a PhD? A PhD means that you are able to work with a minimal supervision. And I just realized that when I start working. When I start working, that they, they assign me some project, I, I realized that I was able to start a project and to finish a project on myself. That I was not always asking to my boss, hey, can I do that, can I do that, can I do that? No, I was totally independent. So um, I just want um, to do with you this kind of, uh, of work when we will, uh, we will say some sentence that maybe during the PhD, it's obvious because, okay, yes, I do a PhD, but what does it mean you do the PhD in the professional world? After that, Okay, I published many papers. I published, mm, some, maybe someone of you published even chapters. They presented at conference. And uh, okay, here I, I found these really uh, funny comics where sometimes we are obsessionated by, uh, the, by the articles. I have to write, I have to write, I have to write, I have to publish, I have to publish. Otherwise, I can get the degree. But mm, at the end, if you are not in the academia, why a publication could be useful, you can ask yourself. And I realized even that um, the making publication right, making a presentation, help you to um, communicate really complex idea in a really short time. I don't know, have you ever heard the elevator pitch, what it is? Okay, so you are able to, to say a really complex things in maybe 30 seconds, in maybe one minute, so the time that the elevator go up. Another th thing is uh, you completed a PhD in uh, three or five years. So when you're going to make, for example, an interview, it's really important that you tell them the time of the PhD because maybe the human resource that is in front of you have no idea what a PhD really is. Maybe he knows, okay, it's research more or less, but maybe think that it's like school, that you do the first, the second, the third year, and after you have the degree. No, it's not like that. So you have to tell them that you finished the, the PhD on time. What does it mean? That you are able to deliver project on time, that you, you are really, when you have a compromise, you work hard to reach this compromise. And another thing that maybe could happen to some of you that you have different supervisor. For example, in my case, I had a professor Charapica, and after I started working with Joaquin, two different person, two different mind, two different way of work. So uh, even working with different people give you the, um, the capability of working with a different person. And this, uh, you will develop even negotiation skills. So in company, you will meet a lot of people, but maybe even during the PhD. And you, maybe you will not get on with all the people. So it's really important to develop negotiation skills, to be able to speak in a polite way and to get on with everybody. Um, Maybe some of you did more uh, an, uh, a quantitative PhD, some, some others made the, a more qualitative PhD. So in both cases, for example, uh, in the case of a quantitative PhD, it will open you a lot of doors. Now it's one of the best positions, being a data science, many, many companies are looking for profile like that. So, uh, I would like to assure you that you will have many open, of, even of the biggest company open to you. Uh, but on the other way, if you don't do a, a quantitative PhD and more a qualitative PhD, even this part is super useful. Um, being able to um, work with people, to develop, for example, questionnaire survey, uh, to conduct interview, it's even one of the most important things, for example, uh, I'm working, I told you, in Securitas Direct. I'm working, I'm working in the customer experience department. So uh, in the customer experience, do you know what, the, what customer experience is it? More or less? Okay, I will, I will make you an example. Um, do you remember the, the most expensive coffee that you take in your life? <laughs> Florence, okay, but you will do that again? Maybe. Maybe. And you know why? Because they don't sell you just the coffee, they sell you even the experience, so even the, the feeling. 
I think that maybe one of the most expensive coffee was in Rome, but yes, I will do that again because it was in a wonderful place with a wonderful view. So I, yes, I will pay six euro for a coffee. And this is a customer experience. It's mm, not mm, just analyzing number, not just mm, staying with, uh, with people, not just considering people, but even consider the feeling. And analyzing feeling, it's mm, really, really difficult. So in the quantitative part, uh, every, not every day, but mm, almost every month, uh, we do interview with customer. We speak with, uh, with our customer. They, we ask them, what do you want? Uh, do you like this journey? Do you like that we sell this product in that way? Are you sure that you like that in, in that way? Or um, do you agree that when you have an, uh, an alarm signal, we will manage it in this way? So uh, even develop these skills are really, really important, even for a professional life. And after, what you learn more, so uh, problem solving skills. So how many times during PhD you thought that you reach a peak, but after you say, oh no, this is not the right way, there is another peak. And uh, it happens to me many, many times. Actually, I think that the 90% of time during the PhD is uh, like that, discovering that there is another peak. And uh, even in the professional life, it's like that. Uh, having problem solving skill, it's really important, but even it's important to do it really quickly. One, I think that one of the, the difference of, between PhD and um, when you are in the academia and you are in, um, outside the academia is the making the second best. So the, my boss always asked me, not, not the, the best things, you don't have to do the, the, the first thing and the, the, the optimistic things, you have to do the second best. So I think that it's okay, that it works good, but in a time, in a short time. So in a, in a time that they cons the company consider acceptable. And after, I think that you are the demonstration of this slide because uh, during the PhD, mainly in the adding program, you work, you met a lot of people from a lot of country, uh, you speak mainly in English, and it is a really important and added value. And in a, in a company, in a professional uh, background, it's really important to be able to stay in contact with uh, different people, with different culture. And so I realized that mm, when I started working in a company where mm, the majority of the people didn't have this opportunity. And so I've been really lucky, you are very lucky that you traveled a lot, that you met many cultures, that mm, you know a lot of people from all over the world. And another thing, um, maybe you do a lot of conference. You, you learn to speak in public. I remember the first time that I speak in public, I was like this in front of my computer, looking at my slide. I don't move, I just read what it was in my slide. So after 10 times that you present in front of people, you learn how to do that. And uh, during PhD, at, at the end of the PhD, I think that you learn to speak in public, you learn to communicate with people. And it is really important because when you have to sell a project in a company, when you have to sell your project, you have to, to defend your, pro, your project because in, in PhD, maybe you are the final defense, but uh, in a company every day I have to defend my, my, my project, every day I have to defend my idea, saying, no, this is, this is correct. I want to calculate that in this way because I think that blah, 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 blah. So uh, being able to communicate with people, to, um, to keep in touch with people even, it's really important. And uh, even maybe if you don't know, you acquired that. Organizing conference. I don't know if you had uh, the pleasure or not to organize conference. Uh, on the first year of PhD, I, in Universidad, um, University of Marque, uh, organize the summer school. So I had to participate in, in organize the summer school. I have to look for speaker, to organize activity, to uh, look for sponsor, and I say, oh my God, how many times I'm losing? I want to do research, I want to read paper, I want to study, I want to make my calculation, I don't want to do these things, why have to do these things? But after you realize that you acquire multitask skills, you acquire uh, different skills that you will 
use after. Do you remember when I told you that every month, for example, we organize meeting with customer? Okay, when you organize meeting with customer, you cannot invite customer in your company and don't offer them anything. Don't organize some activity for your customer. So even uh, in the professional world, even if you are working as a data analyst, that it sounds like that you are in front of your computer blah, 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 doing that like this. No, you have even to event planning events. And maybe during your PhD, you learn even to do that. So uh, one of the last part is being a tutor of a master thesis. Maybe some of you helped some master thesis uh, on his pet. It's a little bit sometimes, at the, at the beginning it's super fun, it's super cool, you are excited because you have never done that. After three years, it's well, another master thesis. It's like a little bit boring. So, but it helps you to keep in contact with people, to lead projects, to manage people. For example, now when I'm working, I have some new guys that I have to manage all the day, and it's really difficult to organize your work, to organize their work, and to provide them support. So it's like, <laughs> like these minions that support the other one. And even that, I have to, in this case, I have to, to say thank you to the PhD, because I even learned that part, to support other people, to manage uh, other people, to work in, t in team. And maybe you are on the last step, so maybe you are writing your thesis. I don't know how many words will have your thesis. And so uh, you wrote a PhD thesis. Okay, this is super difficult, writing a PhD thesis. Put three years work, three years of all these things all together in 500,000, 800,000, I don't know how many words they are. It's a really complicated thing because you cannot put all the activity that you did in these books. So uh, you, maybe you don't realize, but writing a thesis, you are de developing the ability to organize, organize the work that you are doing, to present and to put all together, to put very many, many ideas in a, in a really reduced space. And I will assure you that even in your professional life, it will happen. Because maybe you do hundreds of analysis and you cannot put in a presentation of 30 minutes the hundred of analysis that you did. You can put just two or three things. So you have summar to summarize and to put just the, the main things. So uh, I hope that you like, mm, you like it all of these, mm, small tips because for me, at least for me, it was like a, an introspective job uh, of um, just thinking of what I did and why it was useful. Um, another thing that I would like to do is the part of the interview. So when I start looking for a job uh, outside the academia and I realized that uh, I like the, the world, the universe outside the academia, uh, I noticed that uh, in the majority of the uh, announcement of the um, job advertisement, there wasn't written PhD is required, no. There was bachelor degree, master degree, or maybe master in uh, data science, big data, or something like that. So absolutely don't feel scared about that. Uh, because I, I will tell you, because at the beginning I was feel a little bit scared. I say, okay, maybe I'm overqualified for this position. But no, absolutely not. You are not overqualified. I, I will say <laughs> that you are... <laughs> okay, I will, I will tell you. You are, you are uniquely qualified. I really like the, <laughs> this word. <laughs> because you, you have to make understand. And I think that, for example, when they... When they, um, I signed the contract with, with, with my boss, with the company, they didn't know um, really good what a PhD student was. What a, what it, they didn't know that I acquired all these skills. But during these three years, I think that I demonstrated them that you can have a PhD level of work. 
So it's for that that I tell you are maybe at the, at the beginning you are overqualified, but you are uniquely qualified because you have a lot of skills that you can demonstrate them that the level of your works, it will be completely different of a master thesis students, but completely different. So you have to explain, it's really important that, for example, in an interview, you explain to a human resource um, responsible all the things, all the multitask things that you did during the PhD. Uh, one of the, the big, biggest mistakes that I think we did uh, is that we are a specialist. We are a specialist in our field. So we want to tell them everything, everything about our field, everything we did, but deeply what we did because we spend a lot of time doing, doing these things. We, we sweat a lot doing all these things, but they are not specialists. So uh, they, maybe they know the methodology. If they are technician, they know the methodology we use. And in the majority of the case, they don't know. For example, I did a thesis on a lean management, on resilience, on lean management. I'm not working with lean management. So I cannot bore the person in front of me telling them what is lean management, and I did this analysis, and I did this, and I found that, no. Mainly, uh, you have to explain them what is the methodology that you use, what are the skills that you acquired. Just taking in mind that they are not specialists like you, that they are uh, completely a uh, foreigner of the, the subject. Um, so <laughs> I think that the, the most important message that you have to keep with this, mm, with this part, even if you laugh, <laughs> is that you are uniquely qualified. Company are looking for the, the best candidates. So don't, don't feel scared because they want the best candidate that are in, in the market. So if you have the potential, if you have the knowledge that they are looking for, uh, having a PhD will absolutely not close the door. They will open the door to you. Um, okay, I think that, that's everything on, on, on this part. So um, I told you that I'm working Securitas Direct. I know that you have been maybe, I don't know, all the day listening to presentation. So I hope that I will not bore you so much. I will be really, really short in this part. Everybody know what is Securitas Direct? Maybe you, you see a lot of these things in many, many shops, many, many houses. It's a security company. It's an other company. And uh, what we provide is not just the product, we don't just don't sell the product, but we have the entire value chain. So um, there is the R&D product, that we, we develop the product, we sell the product, there is the installation part, and even the, the monitoring and verification, what does it mean that when the alarm jump, uh, there is someone on the other parts that calls you, and that should call you. <laughs> and telling you if everything it's okay, looking from the camera, it's, uh, if there are some teeth or not. So there is even the customer experience, the maintenance, the um, loyalty. So we, we want that our customer stay with us. Uh, data sci scientists, where is it? They are there. So in all this process, actually in, the, in all the value chain. Why? Because it depends on what you are analyzing. For example, if you want to improve the installation, maybe you want to analyze this part. If you want to improve the maintenance, you analyze this part. I will not go in depth on some project, but after, if you are interested, I will be absolutely happy to tell you some project that we, we make. Uh, I work in the customer experience, so customer experience department. Customer experience department is here, so it's inside the operation we call. So it's inside uh, the maintenance, the customer experience, the monitoring, the installation. So we work with all these parts. We are like a transversal department. We absolutely don't get bored because we, we have to know practically about all the company, all the touch point of the, of the customer. So what we really like to, to say is that we don't manage alarms, we don't manage calls, we don't manage neither maintenance. What we, ma we manage is emotion, emotion of the company, uh, emotion of the customer, sorry. Because uh, what makes that a customer remember you is the emotion. 
So, um, for example, in the example that we made before, why you remember this coffee? Because th there is a feeling, an emotion that linked you to this coffee. Um, so, um, customer experience means involving emotion in each touch point of the customer. Why in each touch point? We have a lot of touch points. For example, here we can have the touch point of the installation. So when you install an alarm, the touch points of the monitoring. So when, for example, you have the first alarm signal and you get scared. So even in this case, you are uh, generating emotion in your customers. And so we, what we do, we try that all these touch points generate positive emotion in our customer. At least we, we try to do, to do that. So this is my, my, my team, the department where I'm, I'm working. And what we mainly do. So I think that this sentence perfectly des describes what we do. We try to know and understand our customer. And uh, we try to understand how they feel, how they feel in each touch points. And um, trying to understand how they feel, we develop improvement. Improvement where? Improvement in our process, even maybe in our product. And so we try to change our process. And why we do that? Because we want to create with our customer stable relationship. And this stable relationship, even if it sounds a little bit uh, philosophical, uh, means that all these parts, so all the cancellation of the company are reduced, the referred sales improve, the upselling improve, the cost of no quality improves. So the having uh, customers that are really happy, it means even that the company rise up, that the company go up. And so we divided this sentence in these three parts because um, what we mainly do is we, we try to understand our customer, how we understand our customer with interview with them, but even with survey. They are, I don't know if you ever heard these two KPI, NPS and CFL. Have you ever heard? No? Okay, the NPS is the net promoter score. So you ask to the customer, would you recommend this company? Because what is the best things that could happen to, to a company? That someone tell to another person, this company, it's so good. Because I will not tell, for example, to Claudia, oh, Securitas Direct, it's so good, if I really don't think that. Because Claudia, it's my friend. So I will tell it to Claudia only if I really uh, trust on, on this company. So the NPS is that, uh, saying how many of our customers will recommend our company. And the CFL is the close feedback loop. It means uh, how satisfied are the customer uh, with some interaction. Every time that our customer have an interaction, for example, the interaction, what it could be? A call, for example, the, I have a problem with the alarms, so it doesn't work properly. I call to Securitas Direct, uh, the, the operator helps me to solve the problem. And after, the day after, maybe, someone will call you, will call you or we will send you an email asking you uh, if they really helped you to solve this problem and if you are happy with the solution that they provide to you. So we, we work a lot on these two KPI. Uh, I know that um, saying like that, it could be like, uh, okay, this lady is telling me some interesting story, but we have like reports every day that we sell even to the CEO of the company monitoring these two KPI. And how, how do we work? How do we uh, work with these two KPI? We don't just wait that this improve and this improve. We work with all these interactions. So we, in Spain, we have more than one million customers. And so they, uh, the alarm of this customer produce a lot of signals, more than two billion signals every year. So, uh, we even have more than five million calls every year. So we have more than, for example, uh, almost one million visits of maintenance to the, um, to the house of our customers. So we have really a lot of touch points 
that we can improve. We have a lot of touch points where we can make that our customers feel good. So generating good feeling in our customers. And as I, tell, as I told you, why we want to do all, all of that, why even the CEO of Securitas Direct is interested in doing that. Because happy customer, it means more customer, it means that the company go good and that all the, um, the KPI of the company are going okay. So uh, I finished my, my presentation. I hope that um, you like that. I hope that it could be maybe useful for you. I know that I didn't tell you anything technical about my job. Maybe you will expect, uh, let's see what this lady do as a data analyst. So if you have any question about my, my um, daily job, I will be happy to, to answer any question. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, do you want to, to submit any question for Ilaria? Yep. Yeah. So you need to, sorry, you need to speak this because of the recording process. Thank you. Hi, Ilaria. Thanks a lot Hi. for uh, sharing. It's, um, it's very um, interesting. Uh, no theory. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's nice. Um, and it's just encouraging as well uh, for us. And I was wondering if... Um, because you, uh, in the beginning, you wanted to be an academic, right? I was not I really sure. Okay, about you that. were not. <laughs> uh, yeah, could you share more on that thought, like okay, academics yes. versus not academics, and then how it? Um, and will, w do you still have that thought in your mind even now? Or yeah. Uh, when I started the PhD, okay, sorry for. Um, thank you for the for the question. And when I started PhD, I was not sure that I want to be a professor. I just knew that I didn't like my actual job, that there was a field that I would like to research on. And I really, I'm really passionate about culture, about research, about not being bored with the same things. I get bored doing always the same things. So PhD was the opportunity for me to choose a subject and to make research on this subject. For me, making research is like um, fit this, uh, this subject with many, many inputs. So having the opportunity to meet a lot of people, having the opportunity to meet different points of view. And so during the PhD, it's the reason why I, I did PhD, because I didn't want to get bored with always the same things. And uh, maybe uh, I had this perception of the, the non-academia because I just had one job before starting the PhD. So I thought that uh, the non-academia, it was a little bit boring, that maybe it was the, the bad part, <laughs> no? <laughs> but after, when I was finishing, I said, okay, I have to decide what I want to do. And even there is another important part that maybe it's not really romantic, but I have to, to mention it, <laughs> is the stability, the economic stability. Uh, I was, after many years, so I'm a, a mechanical engineer, after five years of mechanical engineer, three years of PhD, so eight years of university, I was looking for uh, st economical stability. So I was looking for a non routinary job, for something where I can express my creativity, uh, for something where I was in touch with people. I get bored staying all the day in one desk in front of a computer. And uh, even I was working for something that will allow me to make journey, to maybe buy a house, to buy clothes, to buy things, to do normal things, I mean. <laughs> this is not the case of the academia. Yeah. <laughs> so, so all these kind of things makes me consider that maybe there is a, something outside. And really, read a lot, uh, even apply to some job, go to visit some, some company, and give him, maybe gives you the opportunity to, to work for some months <coughs> in a company, because uh, it's, for, at least in my case, it's totally different from the perception that I had when I was doing a PhD. Uh, you absolutely don't get bored. You work, so for example, in my case, I work in a transversal department. What it means? That you uh, are every day in contact with many different people, but from the operator that answer to the calls, 
from uh, to the director of the maintenance to managers to your boss to your colleagues so it's really motivating jobs and i'm really happy with my decision <laughs> at least for now so i hope that i answer to you i don't know if you <laughs> okay any additional question yep Thanks, Ilaria. It was very interesting to listen Thank to you. your journey. Well, my question is so basic. Like, you already talked about the skills that you have gained through the PhD that helped you in the in the company, right? But you think, did you really need a PhD for such a position or not? Okay, I think um, no, maybe no. Maybe you can you can reach the knowledge that you have during the PhD even just working in a company. But for sure, in an entry, for example, I make you the comparison between a student that finished finish the, the master and uh, a student that finished the PhD. Maybe you enter at the same level. You, you enter, like, for example, with a, a junior data, data analyst. But I will assure you, because I leave that on my skin, that you will grow up with a different trend. Mm. Because even if you economically, maybe you start on the same points, but you have um, skills that you will demonstrate to the company, to your colleagues, mm. to your boss, that are totally different and they, they will see that. Mm. You have um, the capability to organize your work, to, to schedule your time, to even to, to decide what to do, why to choose this analysis and not the another one. For example, if they tell you, you have one week time you maybe you feel a little bit mm, pressured about that but you can organize your work because you leave that because during the, these three years you make that and so you can you are even able I think to to be more proactive I remember when I start working uh, many of my colleagues there was my boss that tell them do that they will do that because they, they just finished the, the academia, they just finished the, the master school. So they were, uh, they were able to, to do many things, but they, they will not ask them themselves, is it the correct things? Is there, for example, uh, other company that are doing the same thing? For example, the literature review. It's something that you think, okay, outside the academia, goodbye literature review. I will not do a literature review anymore. No, this is really important. This really helps to you a lot because before starting a problem, the first thing that you will do is let's see what other companies do. If there is someone in the world that had the same problem of me, and I will assure you that in the majority of the time, there is someone in the world that had the same problem of you. And this is a thing that the master thesis don't do. Don't do that, absolutely. Uh, for example, I have a, a guy that is working with me. And when I told him, OK, let's do a literature review, he looked at me, what? I said, OK, a literature review to see what is the state of art. The state of what? The, of the art? What, what do you mean with art? <laughs> so they, they really don't know. Maybe it depends even on the background, but the, the, the most difference that I, I found is that uh, you have um, a different way of approach the problem, and even the trend of growth are totally different. You grow them in an exponential way. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you.